Is this good? Are we live on camera? Are we? Yeah, okay, we're recording. We're recording. God, it's so much easier when my parents do everything for me because <laughs> I'm your favorite Nepo baby's favorite Nepo baby, Chris. <laughs> yeah, wow, this episode is really putting the unhinged in Unhinged with Chris Clemens. Hello, everybody. Yep, welcome back to Unhinged with Chris Clemens. I am Chris Clemens. If you're not watching this episode on youtube.com slash at sign unhinged, um, you are missing the fact that I dressed up as a Nepo baby because that's sort of the name of the game this episode. I have my Erwan sweatshirt, which I unironically own. Did not buy it for this, but it was a collab with a brand that I like, so I had to. <laughs> I've got a coffee and listen, I'm just ready to go. <laughs> okay, I promise I'll talk in a normal voice. I mean, for some of it. You know, I can't promise the full thing, but what I can promise is we will laugh and we will live and we will love. Maybe we'll love. I don't know, actually. Now, before we get into the episode, I do want to say that New York City slash Brooklyn, I'm doing a live show this weekend, March 3rd. This weekend being like the weekend after this is posted. But um, I'm performing at the Bell House. We're doing a live episode and then stand up afterwards. Be sure to check the description for tickets. It's going to be a good time. Bring some friends. I love doing live shows. And I just think it's going to be really fun. Now, like I mentioned today, I am dressed as a Nepo baby because I think the topic of Nepo babies is just so, <laughs> so polarizing. And for what? I always say that I want to be a Nepo baby. Like people are like, what do you, what do you want to be? Like, what is your goal in your career? And I'm like, to be a Nepo baby. And what sucks is someone has told me that my kids will be a Nepo baby if I have kids. And that really made me want to quit right here and now. I got to be totally fucking real with y'all. You look like fucking clowns. <laughs> now, I guess I should explain like what Nepo babies are for those who don't know. But um, we'll start off with the definition of nepotism. Nepotism is a noun. And it is the practice among those with power, influence, of favoring relatives, friends, or associates, especially by giving them job. Um, okay. <laughs> especially by giving them job. <laughs> I'm sort of obsessed that Miriam Webster forgot one of its many, many words in that sentence. So a Nepo baby is basically just a child of someone with power or fame or money who is out there living their dreams because they can. <laughs> God, that must be fucking nice to have never worked a minimum wage job a day in your life, let alone like 10 Anyways, I'm going to breathe. And while I'm breathing, I might as well remind you guys to subscribe to Unhinged with Chris Clemens. If you haven't already, wherever you get your podcasts, like I said, we do video episodes up on youtube.com slash at sign unhinged. We have TikTok and Instagram. Please leave a rating and a review. Those help us out so much. I've been reading some of the reviews and they're so sweet and cute guys. Like, don't make me get all mushy, you Sons of bitches. <laughs> you sons of nepos. Also, the set has changed a little. It's The desk is now a gorgeous shade of brown that I stained yesterday, and I'm low-key getting high off the fumes of today. So um, a lot's happening. Yeah, it's so fun. Now, I do want to say afterwards, we are going to be doing an after show on patreon.com slash Chris Clemens. It Ooh, I bought a new little thing for it, and I'm kind of interested to try it out. Oh my god, also in the studio, the TikTok shop got me. I mean, I didn't buy it on TikTok shop, but enough people talked about this crisscross swivel chair. I don't know. I'm not explaining it because I, I don't want to, but oh my god, I have to say it's really nice. I got this like boucle kind of version, and it swivels. I didn't get the one on wheels because I need to be stationary. But oh my God, being able to crisscross in a chair, girls, I'm afraid that I'm finding my groove with this podcast. And not only I, but y'all should be scared. I'm like, ooh, shivers up me spine. <laughs> but like, oh my God, I really feel like I'm finding my, my groove here. And I'm excited. Back to the episode, Nepo Babies. I don't understand why Nepo babies make people so mad, even though did I get mad about them in this episode that they didn't have to work a minimum wage job? Yeah, maybe. Okay. Sue me, Sue. I just feel like, you know what? If a Nepo baby wants to start a skincare line, let them. At this point, let them. Just don't buy it. Just let it be a flop. Like that's 
what I don't understand, and like I understand the angle of well, it's wasteful for another skincare. Co- if it's not them, it's gonna be another. Like I, uh, the world is trash. It's full of trash, and it is trash. Let's just roll around and be little piggies in big trash. Like, I think it's frustrating, but for people to immediately write off Nepo Babies, I'm like, if anybody has the vantage point of seeing the industry, for example, we'll talk in Hollywood. For those people who, like, see their parents acting and stuff, it's like, okay, they might know a thing or two, so I'm not going to write them off. Like, yeah, is it annoying they get everything handed? Yeah, but that's a me jealousy problem, not like a them being a Nepo Baby problem. You know, like, I just... I don't know. I I think they're entertaining because it's like, look at them trying their darndest. Like, it's like watching like a, not a newborn giraffe, but like a, a four week old, I guess that's still newborn, but like, I'm talking not right out of the Wugina. I'm talking like, it's had a little time to try and get its footing together. Oh my God. I, that's what I feel about Nepo Baby. It's like, wow, look at it trying its hardest and it's still falling. Ah. Oh! No, it's really incredible. We are going to get into some of the more prominent Napo babies, and we are going to be ranking them. And I have a few possible ways that we could be ranking them, and I figured I'd decide just live on the air, because why not make this a bigger clusterfuck than it already is? I don't know. That's just sort of how I feel. Like, Haley Bieber, you know what? I like her. She seems really sweet. I feel like she's really sort of staying in her lane. I don't get why she gets so much flack, you know? She really do- is so, like, harmless. She only has one fucking brand. I mean, I think that's admirable. She clearly seems passionate about it. Like, I feel like that's really, that fits, you know? And like, oh my God, Brooklyn Beckham. We'll get to him, in fact. he He's in the ranking, and oh my God, I have so much to say. But I just had to have my Nepo coffee. <laughs> No, I did see a TikTok by someone I'm mutuals with on TikTok. Her name is Molly, I think. And she, first of all, is so funny. Molly, I want to get you on the podcast. I doubt you're like watching because you're way too cool for school for me. But (laughs) this sort of made me think of this episode. Like I watched it and I was like, oh my God, this kind of fits right in. And I just, (laughs) I just think it's so funny and so accurate and like, Okay, I'm just gonna play it for y'all. Okay, can rich people go back to flexing and shitting on poor people? Like, I, I'm i not even gonna get into the whole conversation about how there's no ethical way to be a billionaire, but I do feel like there are kind of less obnoxious ways, and I feel like this whole quiet luxury, like living a modest lifestyle while hoarding billions of dollars, I feel like that's more obnoxious. Taylor Swift took a picture of her, like getting in her private jet, like, <laughs> and put it on Instagram and made the caption, hoes mad because they can't afford it. You know how much more respect I would have for that one? I would actually consider converting to Swiftyism. Before her fans get in my comments saying like, oh, she she's just like classy, like that's tacky, that's whatever, like she's just like a nice person. There's nothing nice nor classy about taking a 20 minute private jet plane ride, that, in my opinion. And I get it, okay, we all have our faves. But you need to also realize she does not care if you live or die. In fact, if she could profit off of your execution in any way, <laughs> she would order it herself. I and I get it, we all have our kids. I think all celebrities and all rich people are pieces of shit. So I'm not going to sit here and act like mine are better. <laughs> the difference is y'all stay slobbing on her knob like fucking corn on the cob every second of your spare time. And I think that's a bit much. In conclusion, Taylor Swift, if you're watching this, I want to see more money spreads. I want to see you (laughs) getting on your Instagram story, doing tours of your private jet. I want to see Taylor Swift put a screenshot of like the celebrities that have like the biggest like CO2 admissions. I want her to take a screenshot, put that on her story and make the caption LMFAO laughing, crying emoji. Remember when Melania Trump wore that jacket that said like, I don't give a fuck or something (laughs) like Taylor Swift. We need to see more of that. Like, here's the thing. We live in a capitalist society that are going to be just insanely wealthy people. Like, let's have them at least be entertainment, you know? We don't have to buy things from them, but, like, I would like to see the luxury. I would like to see the lengths to which your money goes, you know? Like, I think that what she said about quiet luxury, that's somehow worse. Like, that really hit when I heard it, because, like, it is worse. You're trying to make us forget the fact that you are just wiping your ass with $100 bills, Like, show us the plane rides. Show it. Like, own it. Fucking Oprah Winfrey network this shit. Own it. (sighs) 
my wig has fallen off. But yeah, I do agree that I would have a lot more respect for Taylor Swift if she posted just the list and she was like, topping the charts again. Hee <laughs> hee. Oh my God, I would follow so fast. I would spend three days walking around with a laptop trying to get tickets. Like I, I would be on board. Like, this whole Kardashians trying to be modest thing, it doesn't look good on you. Own it. I mean, you have a house bigger than our government leader's house in D.C. Show us, babe. I want a room-by-room tour. I would love, preferably, a Google Maps, like, little click button to go through the little monastery. I want to see the vegetable garden. Like, I want to see it all. Because you've got the money I want to see. I want you to show me how much money you have so I can be properly mad. (laughs) And properly bitter. Anyways. That was like a half serious rant. (laughs) Emphasis on half. Because like, yeah, these people have the money just because they're not showing it. Like, I'd rather see it, you know? Show me what exclusive bags you have. Show me the jet tour. Like, ugh, the jet tour. Like, I've never even been on a jet. I want to (laughs) see. I need to be reminded what to work for again. I don't want this simple life, although I really do. But I want... I'm going to be doing cartwheels on an airplane while smoking a blunt. That's what I want. I don't even give a shit. This planet, if other people aren't going to care about the planet and it's still going downhill, fuck it. We ball. (laughs) I don't know why it always comes back to fuck it, we ball, but fuck it, we ball. I don't know. That's my hot take of the day. Now, for this episode, we're not going to do any advice, but I want to get back to, like, some of the prompts that I used to say and you guys would call in about. So I'm giving y'all your homework, and it's to email unhingedwithchrisclemens at gmail.com, and I want you to tell me the best slash worst celebrity encounter you've had. Make the subject line, like, best or worst celebrity encounter I've had. Listen, we all know by now that I am what? Nosy. I live for it. Oh, I will be sharing a, ooh, just mortifyingly embarrassing encounter with a Nepo baby at the end of this episode. It's a video I have privated on my YouTube channel, and I feel, I guess, delusional enough to share it this time, loud and proud with my chest. I don't know, but uh, that's to come. Now, before we do that, I wanted to rank Nepo babies, because if there's anything I love doing on this podcast. It's ranking. And I thought I could do celebrity alcohol. I could do celebrity products. No, I want to see celebrity byproducts, aka their children. And so I have put together a list of Nepo babies. Obviously, it is not fully conclusive. Now, I will be doing like 10 or so on the after show. So if your fave isn't in this, (laughs) if your fave Nepo baby isn't in this, (laughs) they very well could be on the after show. Now, I don't know how I want to rank them. And I guess I thought about this thinking that there would be some sort of conversation that we would be having. But I have three different ideas of how to rank them. One, how they market Nepo babyism. Like, do they give it a good name? Do they give it a hard name? And I think that's a tough one because that feels very subjective, which does feel kind of controversial. And what do I want to be today? Asleep. Now, the next way I thought of ranking these is how much of their Nepo babyism they would share. Like, basically, would I be a Nepo baby friend to a Nepo baby to a Nepo, you know? But that seems kind of complicated and I'm already kind of lost in my math. And this is the way I feel most inclined to rank them, which is the third way, how they would be as a friend. And I feel like this one sort of encapsulates, you know, how much they would share. And then we, I think the marketing of Nepo babyism, they would really, that would play into if they would be a friend of mine. So I think we are going to rank them how they would be as a friend. First up on the list, we have controversial Nepo baby. I mean, number one, Haley Bieber. I mean, listen, I think she would be a good friend. I just, she gives me some kind of like energy that she's a really sweet person and just is a human punching bag. I mean, she just is constantly taking a social beating. And you know what? I won't stand for it any longer, Miss Biebs. I love my road products. I don't give a shit, honestly. They are good. They are good. They work. I genuinely believe she uses them. Like, I just feel like she is self-aware that she's a Nepo baby. And she's like, yeah, let's just have fun. And that 
is all I could ask for, you know? I just, I don't understand the Hailey Bieber hate. Like, I think just because she's pretty, everyone wants to think she's mean. I, I genuinely think she's so sweet. I don't have any foundings to go off of except, like, a few mutual friends. But I really think she gets a bad rap. And I'm going to rank her S-tier. Like, she is the S-tier Nepo baby. And, oh, how she would be as a friend. Oh, I think she would be a good friend. Just because she's a Nepo baby, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, so I'm putting her at S-tier. Now, I guess I should remind y'all of the tiers of some of you are new and have never ranked anything in your life. One, where have you been? To the ranking, not this podcast. I very much understand that. S-tier is superior, supreme, spectacular, whatever. That's the best tier you can get. Then there's A, B, C, D, and F. And those are just like the grades that we all got in school. Next up, we have Lily Rose Depp. And... I know that this might go against everything I just said about Haley, but she is pretty to the point where she scares me and her, like, she's so fucking cool looking and pretty that I'm intimidated. This is fully a me thing. And also something about her just absolutely makes me feel like she would put a cigarette out on me. I have no foundings. This is all alleged. (laughs) I, I don't know if she would be a good, like, she and I would be good friends. I'm open, obviously, because I don't know anything about these people, but I don't think that we would be good friends. I think she would, like, think I'm a fucking freak and not, like, the kind she played in whatever that show was. But there's just something where I'm like, yeah, we are just, you are Nepo baby, I am just baby. You know? Like, we are from different worlds and that will divide us. (laughs) I'm gonna put Lily at, like, a B because I really do think, like, she markets, she makes Nepo babyism sexy. Like, we need more Nepo babies to make it sexy. (laughs) But, like, we do! So, like, I do give her respect on that and she does seem like she has a hard exterior, maybe a softer inside. But off the surface, Lily, I'm so sorry. You would probably be a B. And also your dad is Johnny Depp. And I still, I don't know about that. But like, hey, you seem really cool and you are very fashionable. And like, I do think we would get along there. But fashion people really intimidate me. So I think that's maybe why you're getting some of my bias. Next up, we have Dakota Johnson. And I think she would be a really good friend. I do. I don't care whatever you think of her. That moment where she put Ellen in her place about her birthday, when she was like, I invited you. And Ellen was like, no, you didn't. And she's like, ask your producers. Everybody knows I invited you. And she was like, oh, I was out of town. She was at the fucking Dallas Cowboys game with George Bush. (laughs) It's like, you can't even write this shit. She called her out on national television. What's even crazier is that Ellen's people put that in. The episode, they could have cut that completely. (gasps) Oh my gosh. I think Dakota Johnson would be an incredible friend. Like that interview alone has scored her enough points where she could really take a shit on me daily. I mean, push me to the ground, step over my limp, bruised body, squat down and shit it on me. She has every right to after that. She is an American hero. Dakota Johnson, I do think, would be a very good friend. We have very similar interior design taste. (laughs) Um, I'm going to put her at S. I really fuck with Dakota Johnson. You know, her first big role was Fifty Shades of Grey. You know what? I think. Let's see. Okay, I just looked it up, and I'm pretty sure that Fifty Shades of Grey was her very first movie. For that to be her using her Nepo baby status to basically do a soft porno... I think is admirable and more Nepo babies need to be like this. Like get naked and then you can get dressed in your gorgeous clothes that your parents just gave you for, cause it was a Friday, you know, I don't know. I think she is a superhero <laughs> knowing my luck, something horrible about her just came out and I'm, <laughs> I don't know, but I'm sticking with it. She's S tier. I think she is top notch. Next up we have Zoe Kravitz. And how do I think Zoe Kravitz would be as a friend? I feel like she would be a really chill, a really loyal friend who like would go up to bat to you, but she does have some of that Lily Rose like intimidation. And it's just simply because she is so fucking cool. And also her dad is Lenny Kravitz. Like, okay, I feel like if your dad is Lenny Kravitz, you're not a Nepo baby. You're an everyday American, just like you and I. (laughs) I just think, you know what? Lenny, oh, I love Lenny Kravitz. I don't even know why. He's just so fucking cool. Oh my God. Um, Okay, Zoe Kravitz as a friend, I'm going to put it A tier. I do think that there would be a like, I we are just different species 
Like, she is just so cool, and I am so not. But I do think, whip out a J, and I do think we would just click like that. Oh my god, and then she could give me style advice, and then I could just give her my phone to order DoorDash. I don't know what I would bring to that table, but I guess, yeah, delivery for our soon-to-be munchies. You know what? I'm going to put Zoe in S. I do feel like she would be a really sweet, kind person. Like, to be, like, even though she's so cool and edgy, I think I could relate to her. And by that, I'm just saying I will have smoked enough before going to her house. <laughs> Thank you. Next up, we have Gracie Abrams, um, whose dad is J.J. Abrams, who I think directed Star Wars, Star Fox, Star Wars. I don't know where I just pulled Star Fox out of, but that would be my Nepo baby porn name. Like, I am Star Fox. And honestly, I think I'm giving with this outfit. But um, Gracie Abrams, I don't know anything about her. I'm sure she's a wonderful lady. I know that she was just on, um, what was that? Oh, the Grammy's Best New Artist. <laughs> what was that? But um, I know that we have mutual friends. She seems really sweet. So, like, I think she would be a good friend. I don't mean this in a bad way. I feel like she'd maybe get lost in the crowd. But maybe that's because I just have never, like, sat down to pay attention to her. So maybe that's just my projection. I'm going to put her at uh, B because I don't know anything about her. I really don't. I don't know why I put her on the list, to be honest. Not for any other reason, because I just don't know anything about her. I know she's a singer, and that I'm like 75% sure of. <laughs> but we're going to put her at B, because or C. We'll do C, because like, you know, that's like the class average. I don't know anything about her. I'm just going to say she's average. I'm sure she's a wonderful lady. Next up, we have Gigi Hadid. Gigi Hadid is an interesting one, because... On one hand, she seems really chill and down to earth. And then on the other hand, she still publicly supports her mom, <laughs> Yolanda Hadid. And that to me is troubling. And I guess, yes, that is her mother. So I, I'm glad she's still. I don't know, though. Like, your mom is. Didn't she, like, assault Zayn or, like, lie about Zayn assaulting her, which is, like, almost worse? I. I'm just judging her based off of... Although, that is, like, who their parents are. I enjoy my friends' parents just as much as my friends. And I really think that would be a hindrance. Like, I can't ever talk shit about my friends' parents to my friends. That would be crazy. Like, so therefore, like, if I don't really fuck with the parents, at the end of the day, your friends will most likely always take the side of their parents above you. And that, to me... You have to get along with the parents. I really think that Gigi and I, like, could be friends. But, like, she's also friends with Taylor Swift. And I don't think Taylor Swift and I would be friends. Just she's, like, too quirky and, like, boing. And I'm very just, like, bong. Literally. <laughs> like, yeah, I just think that maybe I don't know if Gigi and I would be get along so much. And plus, she has a kid. And I don't think I'm the most kid-friendly like, I'm nice to them if I have to be. Oh, my God. The other day I was high in the dentist. And what a nightmare. I forgot that, like, the dentist was a public-facing experience. Just because I haven't been in two years. And there were kids in the... I almost said the playroom because that's what it felt like. In the living room. The waiting room. Whatever we're doing in that room before we get called back. It was so off-putting. Um, I'm going to put Gigi at like... Although she dated Zane. And he definitely partakes in the same activities I do. Which makes me think that she does too. Oh my god, wait! Ah! She got like arrested in the Cayman Islands for having it. We'd be friends. <laughs> All it takes is the possession of a beautiful bouquet of flowers. Um, I'm going to put her at A. No, B. B because she has a baby. B for baby. I think we would be fine. Yeah. Although, Lily Rose Depp is at B. Okay, we're going to put Gigi Hadid at A. I'm so sorry to Justin, my editor, who is just sliding these people around in the edit. <laughs> I'm going to put Gigi at A, final answer. Next up, we have Olivia Jade. And this might be controversial, but if I'm ranking Nepo babies in terms of how they would be friends with me, I might have to put her at S. Because here's the thing. If she is going to pretend to be a D1 Olympic athlete just to get into college, bitch, she will help you bury the body. She seems loyal as hell. <laughs> if she knows one thing, it's how to get out of a situation. She's back. She's posting. Isn't she dating like Jacob Elordi? Like, I don't know. I think she... <laughs> 
<laughs> I think she would be a good friend because, listen, like, yeah, she would just help you bury the body. Like, I think she would be like a solid ride or die. But she does give me the sense of like, if I talked shit about her mom, which I would, it would happen. I don't think she would stay friends with me. So that might be an area of contention. I'm going to put her in B because like the Lily Rose Depp of it all. I do think that Olivia Jade would be a good friend (laughs) until you talk shit about her mom, which like, come on, Liv, Livy J, come on. Let us talk shit about Aunt Becky or if that, I don't know. I don't remember Full House, but yeah, I'm going to put her at B because I do think she could be a good friend. Sorry. Next up, we have Tracy Ellis Ross. Now, I think anybody who is the daughter of Diana Ross deserves the world. I'm sorry. Diana Ross is a diamond. She is an icon. She is a legend. I live for Diana Ross. I don't know anything about Tracy. I know she's an actress, and I know that her smile makes my day instantaneously just better. Any type of content I have seen of her has been against my will, and I enjoy it every single fucking time. I just love this woman. A perfect example of a Nepo baby. I feel like she would be a spectacular friend and honestly, a good time. She is going to S tier. Tracy Ellis Ross, I mean, I want to hang out with you. You seem fun. And you're also really cool. Every outfit I see you in, I'm like, yep, I like this. Unless I have said otherwise in an outfit roast video, but in that case, I meant it. And I would be honest with you. So I think we would make great friends. I really do. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Your Honor. (laughs) Next up, we... (laughs) What is wrong with me? Okay, I made this list when... Sure, maybe I was under the influence of... (laughs) Yeah. All right. Next up, we have Northwest. And I do believe that Northwest is a great example of someone who is marketing Nepo babyism beautifully. She is having the time of her life while doing nothing. And nor should she be. She's 11. Like, how fun. She hopped on a song with her dad. She's like trying on skims with her mom. Like, I love that she's just like, yeah, I'll do a shoot. Yeah, sure. I'll hit the booth. Like, But she's just on TikTok like a normal kid. Like, I kind of love her as a Nepo baby and am really excited to see her journey into Nepo baby stardom. Now, in terms of being a friend, she does scare the living shit out of me. One, because she's a child. And two, because she's an unpredictable child. And three, she doesn't give a fuck. Now, in terms of being friends, I think that might be difficult considering the fact that there's a 19-year age gap. I do think she scares the living hell out of me, so she's not S-tier whatsoever. But, like, I think I might put her at, like, B. Because... I don't know. She's your bestie, Miss Miss Westie. And like, I do think that we could be besties or we could be worsties. I, yeah. I, so that, for those reasons, I'm putting Northwest at B. <laughs> Next up, oh, the person I have just been dying to talk about, Brooklyn Beckham. Brooklyn Beckham to me is an anomaly. I don't actually know what anomaly means. So let me look that up. Uh, Anomaly. Oh my god, I wasn't too far off with the spelling of anomaly. Something that deviates from what is standard. Okay, yeah, he is an anomaly. He has two of the most famous richest parents, David Beckham, aka one of the world's most famous soccer players, and Victoria Beckham, one of the world's most famous pop stars in one of the world's biggest girl groups, Spice Girls. With all of that money, all of that fame, and all of that success, tell me how. He has, like, flopped out of two and a half career paths. Guys. (laughs) Like, that's almost so humbling and so relatable. Like, I feel seen and also heard. But that being said, um, yeah, there is something that is so incredibly annoying about Brooklyn Beckham calling himself a chef when he and I cook exactly the same in terms of we both opened a jar of Rayos and used it for the recipe, which I am not shaming but I am also not calling myself a chef. Um, I did buy, did I buy his photography book? Ooh, is that going to be a podcast episode where we just grill the shit? If do people not know about Brooklyn Beckham's photography book, this might be something I have to rewind on. Oh my God. Yeah. In one of Brooklyn Beckham's like failed Nepo baby pathways, he was a photographer. Oh my God. And I went to school for photography. So this did strike a chord with me. Actually, he just picked up a really nice camera one day. 
just started taking pics. Terrible photos. Oh my God, awful. Like, <laughs> like, girl, go to art school and really learn how to BS your way through a photo assignment, then make a book. Like, come on now, girl. Okay, now I'm starting to understand Nepo babyism. But like, that is my argument with Nepo babyism. If it seems like their passion and it's something that they're clearly doing right, work. If you're doing this bullshit just because you can, that's where I have a problem. But yeah, everyone's typing in the comments. <laughs> Chris, that's literally why we all hate Nepo babies. Got it. I <clears throat> don't think Brooklyn Beckham and I would be friends. I also, uh, I need to just stop talking my shit. Because I can really talk it. He doesn't give me great vibes. I am going to put him at D. Because, like, he does have entertainment value in him. In that he is entertaining to watch what he does next. <laughs> that I will give him. But I don't think we'd be friends. And he just gives me, like, white mediocrity vibes to the nth degree. Like, I see him. He goes to a fashion show and he's dressed up. And he's like, this is my style. And I'm like, girl, that's okay work. That's your style. I would not say that on a recorded line. Anyways, Brooklyn Beckham is at D. Next up, we have Jaden and Willow Smith. I just made them a package deal because why not? Um, I think that they're too cool for me. It, this is, I'm going to just put them in with Lily Rose Depp at B because I do think we would get along great. I do think half the time I wouldn't know what we're talking about, which I guess is fine because I don't even know what I'm talking about here. But on the other hand, I think I would just be like stoned in the corner, just staring at them just w because they're too cool. I, I would just be afraid to make a move because it would be so embarrassing. So I'm going to put them at B, but I really do enjoy both of them. I, re I really do. Next up, we have Paris Hilton. And in terms of Paris and I being friends, we are mutuals on TikTok. Hi, Paris. <laughs> I say on a podcast that's on YouTube, but work, Chris. I think Paris Hilton is a, an excellent example of an Epo baby. I really do. She is just having fun. She is harming nobody. Like, yeah, is she a DJ? Yes. But that scene she gave at Tomorrowland of cutting her boyfriend's bracelets, she can be anything she fucking wants. She can fly my next airplane. The next time I have a flight, she could be flying the damn plane and I would be stoked because I know that we wouldn't die. We would be, in fact, sliving. There also feels like something about her that is approachable and relatable, even though she is quite literally Paris Hilton. I'm going to put her in S tier. I think we would have fun. I think we would be good friends. She seems loyal. She seems, although I wouldn't know which phone to call because she has like five cell phones. So maybe I would rank her lower, but I do think we would be really good friends. And Paris, I have DM'd you and you have not responded. <laughs> So maybe we wouldn't be good friends because I take that so personally. I'm going to put Paris at A, even though I think she's riding the line of S. Next up, we have such an iconic Nepo baby, Angelina Jolie. <gasps> See, just like another person who stays in their lane, has like a wine brand, although that might be a touchy subject because I think um, she's... That was like a co-owned thing with Brad and they're in a divorce. But we did try it on the podcast way back when. <gasps> Oh, I want to do another one of those. Maybe we will. But I think Angelina Jolie is great. I think she's gorgeous. I think she is a great actress and just, you know, she is an activist. And I do think she's too cool for me. I will put her in B along with the cool kids. I just don't know what we would talk about. I would want to talk about everything, but I definitely think she would be sitting there thinking, this crackhead needs to get out of my house. Although she would have probably never let me over to her house, which I respect and I understand. Although, oh my God, once I did look at a house across the street from hers in like a gated community. Oh, whoa, guys. She really knows what she's doing. Wow. That was like a Nepo baby compound. That was gorgeous. That was everything and more. Ooh, yeah. I think B. I think we would like, could be friends. I think we'd be acquaintances. And that's where I sort of feel like B is. Is like, we would be the friends that see each other at events and we're like so stoked and we hang out and have the best night, but we don't really seek each other out in our everyday lives. Oh my God, Chris, you're a genius. Like, Chris, your brain is almost getting a little too big for this wig. I mean, your natural hair. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to put Angelina Jolie at B. Next up, we have Stella McCartney. I don't know anything about her except for the fact that her dad is Paul McCartney and that she has a fashion brand that I don't think has really made anything that I've been 
ooh-ahed by. I know that that's maybe me, and I know that everything is vegan, so that's amazing. But, you know, to quote Aretha Franklin on Taylor Swift, gowns, beautiful gowns. I don't actually think she makes gowns, but um, I'm going to put Stella at, like, a C, Uh, Because I don't know if we would be friends, and therefore I'm putting her at sea. She's just kind of gives me, like, she's there energy. Very much how I would be. So maybe we would be friends. No, I'm going to leave her at sea. All right, next up we have Bella Hadid. I do think Bella and I would be friends. And she seems more approachable than, like, a Lily Rose Depp. But... She definitely scares the living shit out of me because she is so cool and what that bitch. But I think I have to put her at A. I really do like what she does like with Kin. I feel like that makes so much sense for her. I like Kin. I do feel that it improved my life when I did drink it. I do think that daytime one tastes like bitter shit though, respectfully. Like I still drank it, but I think we could soften the blow on that one. It's like eating an orange bitter It's just bitter. I think that's the adjective. I fuck with Bella Hadid a lot. I think she's cool. I think she stands up a lot for what she believes in. I think we would be friends. Like, I really do. I do think she would be, like, too cool for me, and it would be an element of I don't know what to even talk about. Like, do Huh? I guess we could talk about traumatic parents for sure. Oh, so true. We already have a very solid foundation. I'm going to put Bella Hadid at A. I do think we could be, like good friends who would see each other more than just the average event. Next up, we have Emma Roberts. And Emma Roberts is one of those people who definitely scares the shit out of me. She followed me on Instagram and she doesn't follow me anymore, which (laughs) that was definitely something to internalize. But like, I think she would be one of those people I'd have fun with at events. But I don't think we would, like, seek each other out. Although I did ask her to get dinner, and she was like, okay, I'm down, and then, like, never really followed up with that. So, hmm. (laughs) Yeah, I guess this I have firsthand experience with. I'm going to put her at B. You know, she's a busy lady. She had a baby. Like, I'm going to put her at C, actually. I don't know if we would be friends. I really don't. I would like to think we would because she seems cool and fun, but... Yeah, I think more than Lily Rose Depp, she's intimidating. So I'm going to put Emma Roberts at C, and I don't know why I feel like she has just a British accent, but I do. So there it is. Okay, next up we have Kaya Gerber, and I am actually friends with Kaya Gerber, and I she is the sweetest bitch alive. Like, truly the most wholesome, like, just genuine, I feel. And I know a lot of people might be like, oh, whatever, Chris, but I don't give a fuck. She is truly so nice. I met her at Coachella, which is really just, like, the most nepo baby sentence that could have ever come out of my mouth in this episode. But I met her at Coachella through a mutual friend that I was there with, and she was just talking so openly to me and we're in a big group of people all of which were like quote-unquote cooler like more fascinating or established in the industry and she there's oh my god this was mortifying i think someone like tweeted me this picture but they were like why are you talking with kaya gerber and it was a fucking paparazzi picture of us at coachella and i was like huh we talked for such a long time and she carried a conversation and i know with other friends of mine in group settings they are more quiet And she's like, oh, hi, I'm Kaya. Like, she's just really a sweet person. I think she's smart. I think she's, like, fucking stays in her lane and speaks up about things. I don't know. I really have a lot of love and respect for Kaya. She is a good friend. Like, she is a good-ass, loyal, kind, sweet, smart friend. And I'm going to put her in S tier. I think she really is just such a sweet, sweet person. That I think, honestly, a lot of people might not think she is because she is so, like, pretty and intimidating, but I don't care. She is... Oh, (laughs) I love her. I literally nothing but good words for her. All right, last but not least, we have Miley Cyrus. And Miley, I mean, girl, where have you been? Hit my line. We would be good friends, I feel. Especially when you were going through that Dead Pets era where you were just gluing beads to everything. Girl, hit my line. And then hit my glass instrument that resembles a vase (laughs) the hula hoops and cartwheels i am doing through this adsense check yeah i think miley and i would be good friends she does give me two cool vibes but really relatable i'm sorry if i'm screaming oh my god i'm really getting into this (laughs) 
feel like I have a whole new posse. But I really do fuck with Miley. I think she's amazing. I love just this new era she's in. I've loved every era. And it's a real big bummer that I'm putting Miley in S because, not because of anything that she did, but everything because of I did, which she is my Nepo baby encounter. So before I get to that, Miley, S tier. And also the S stands for sorry, because this, there, ooh, there's really no excuse for this one. Um, So this is my cringy... <laughs> experience with Miley Cyrus. And this was a YouTube video I recorded back when I started YouTube in college. This was sophomore year. So I was like only a year into it. I was like very small, like very much still like a fan. Like I was a huge fanboy growing up of like so many, like I was just, I was a stan. I was like the modern day equivalent of a stan. And I really loved Miley. And someone I went to uh, college with who dropped out to pursue their career is a paparazzi. And so he was like, hey, I know you love Miley. She's staying at this hotel. And it was there when she was there for the bangers tour. And I was going to that and I was like, oh my God. And like that era was, I was, I fucked with so hard. Cause like I was going through like, uh, I dressed really preppy and like just tried to fit in. And then I went to college and was really just trying to figure out who I was. And I just felt such a, a camaraderie <laughs> with Miley in the bangers era. And so I just, that really took my love for her to the next level, to the point where I waited outside her hotel in the snow, bow, 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 and there are what, sadly, photos of it. Now, as if waiting outside her hotel wasn't bad enough, it was, in fact, two days after her dog Floyd was eaten by a coyote, or like a week, regardless, a uncomfortably short amount of time. This was also the day that she got a brand new pet and brought it. And this paparazzi picture was like everywhere of her bundled up with sunglasses. Oh my God, we had the same sunglasses. I was like, oh. So yeah, my friend and I, who I'm not going to put on blast, we waited outside and we met her and it was so cringy. And I was like, I'm so sorry about Floyd. And she was, she was genuinely, I, first of all, anybody who waits, I've had people wait outside my hotel. I hate it. I understand and appreciate the support, but from just a human level, that is so scary to me that people know where I am and if I'm not there. And also now being on this side of it, I just, I would not have, I mean, I guess I would have been nice, but oh my God, she was just so sweet considering the circumstances and I am just so embarrassed and oh, just embarrassed. Like I just, oh, that's so cringy. Oh my God. And then I got home and made a story time video about it. Like what is wrong with me? Yeah, I, oh, I'm sort of regretting telling that story, but you know what? Y'all give me so much. It's time I give back. Oh God. Miley, I am so sorry. That is I do not condone waiting outside hotels or, oh God, but I really, it came from a place of love. I just, I love you, Miley. <laughs> okay, now before we um, outro this episode, I did see a funny set of comments on the last episode YouTube video. A question I do get a lot is what happened to Sam, Jake, and Justin? If you don't know, they used to be on the episodes with me, but just with a whole restructuring and things, uh, I just wanted it to be me again. And so a comment on the last episode was, why are Sam, Jake, and Justin not on the pod anymore? No hate. I just missed a few chapters and wanted to know why. I respond and I say, I wanted the show to be how it started and over Zoom with so many people, it just got hard to have convos due to lags and technical issues. Plus, with the old podcast network going under, everyone's roles intensified or changed, etc. was a hard decision, but ultimately one I'm happy I made. And so... <laughs> Someone replies and goes, beautiful explanation, but I'm going to start a conspiracy theory that you ate them. Heart emoji. <laughs> and then this person comments again and goes, he ate them. Heartbreak emoji. And then someone under them responds to them and goes, rip old unhinged crew. May you contribute many calories for the future. And I just was sitting at my computer cackling over this. And y'all are just funny and stupid. Stupid. <laughs> so stupid. And I love it. Oh, be sure to comment and rate and review this episode. If you're watching it on YouTube, be sure to 
comment, but be sure to leave ratings and reviews because I love going through the reviews and sometimes use them as this little outro. But I am going to go head on over to the after show on patreon.com slash Chris Cummins. Also, speaking of the after show, I am doing audio versions now as well. So if you really like listening, I will be uploading audio versions of the episodes and you can basically go to my Patreon account on the app hit the three dots and get the RSS feed and then follow it wherever you listen to podcasts. So you can just have it basically appear in wherever you listen to podcasts as well. So you don't really have to seek out Patreon if that's enticing to anybody. Anyways, that's enough of me trying to role play as a Geek Squad member. Um, Thank you so much for tuning in. I am really loving where this podcast is and what we're doing. And yeah, I just, I really love it. If you have any fun topics that you think would be fun for me to go down, be sure to leave them in the comments. And also, if you haven't subscribed to Unhinged with Chris Clemens, wherever you get your podcasts, it is a fun ass time and I really have enjoyed it. Like I said, rate and review in New York City. Be sure to get tickets. I'm so excited for that show. It really feels like such a homecoming because New York is kind of where I grew into who I feel like I am and really felt that confidence. And it's like where a lot of my channel took place. It's just a real nice sweet spot and I'm excited to perform. And uh, okay, I will see you guys next episode. But until then, see you on the after show. Bye. Bye.